Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked, may Allah preserve you and may Allah preserve you as well Ameen ya Rabbilalamin I was wondering if you could make a short video about the following topic There are sisters who came into this minhaj many years ago and they claim to be Salafis and Allah knows best but the fact of the matter is that they don't know Arabic, can't read the Quran properly, didn't finish any study about Tawheed, and yet they are obsessed about worldly things. Some of them seem to be obsessed about crime series, reading books about serial killers, etc. I've watched one or two episodes of some serial killers and it had an effect on my heart. We as women should take heed and busy ourselves with finding a suitable husband and getting ready to marry, work on ourselves and educate ourselves instead of reading useless books or watching useless series. This is because women have no guardians. Most of them have no fathers or brothers who correct them. So shouldn't they be eager to find a man who will protect them against themselves? Uh, Jazakallah khairan. First and foremost, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al nafia wa rizq al tayyibah wa amal al mutaqabbilin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of those who have concern about themselves and the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their brothers and sisters, and who are following the religion by practicing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in giving advice and asking for advice by following the ayat where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says فَسَلَحْ لِذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know about something or even that includes seeking advice. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said أَدِّينَ نُسِّحَا أَدِّينَ نُسِّحَا أَدِّينَ نُسِّحَا قَالُوا لِمَنْ قال لله ولكتابه لولي أئمة المسلمين وعمتهم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وسلامه عليه he said a deen and a sihah. He said the religion is sincere advice. The companions رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين or a group of the companions they said رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين they said لمن who to who who is this advice to يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he sallallahu alayhi wasallam responded by saying, Lillah. This advice is to uh, is for Allah. Lillahi. Wali kitabihi. Wali rusulihi. Wali a'immatul muslimin wa ammatihim. And so it is it's it's for Allah. And it's for his uh messengers uh and, and for his book. And for the imams of the Muslims, the leaders of the Muslims, and the general folk, meaning the general Muslims. So by seeking sincere advice and fo is following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa hadha khair kathir. And that is great, great khair. Also, from the ni'amillah, from the benefits and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you mentioned, that these sisters have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to the blessed minhaj of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The minhaj which exalts the divine speech of Allah, the Book of Allah. And the speech and practice and example of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of the Salaf used to say, I don't know which ni'mah is better to be guided to Islam or guided to the Sunnah or what is similar to that in meaning. Meaning that the Salaf realized the importance of not just accepting Islam, have a ni'mah min ni'amillah, that is just... SubhanAllah, we can't even begin to count the blessings and the favors 
that Allah has bestowed on the person who gains guidance. But even greater than that is not just to enter Islam, but to be enter Islam on the Sunnah. And we talked about it in our short, <clears throat> one of the recent lectures, in which we discussed, we read some of the athar, some of the statements of the Salaf, in which they talked about the superiority of dying on the Sunnah. And how the Salaf regarded that as a sign of great and immense khair. And you mentioned that these sisters don't know Arabic. They can't read the Quran properly. And they didn't finish any studies about Tawheed. On top of that, they're obsessed with worldly things. Some of this is problematic. Some of this is problematic. It is not necessary in absolute terms that you know Arabic. But Arabic is going to be a tool to help you advance your Islamic knowledge if you use it that way. But learning how to read the Quran properly is, is very important. And in fact, it is an obligation to learn how to especially read what you are going to recite in prayer properly, meaning Surah Al-Fatiha and any other surahs. So that is wajib. That is an obligation. And likewise, it's an obligation to know about Tawheed. At least know that all worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes. And what that entails. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his lordship, that he tabarak wa ta'ala is the creator and sustainer and the provider of all things. And that he is over all things omnipotent. <clears throat> So it's imperative that they do the wajib. So I want to advise myself and my brothers and sisters to do the wajib. Know the basis of your religion, those things which you need to know. All of us need to know. We all need to have basic knowledge of the religion. And Imam Muhammad Wasiya, said a beautiful, profound statement in his treatise entitled Usul Thalatha, قال, اعلم رحمك الله he said, No, and may Allah have mercy upon you. So first he, he began by making dua, letting you know, giving you the, for one, to open your heart to accept what he was going to uh, articulate. And to open your hearts to the knowledge. To make you more accepting by making du'a. And this was the way of the Salaf. Rahimahum Allah Jameer. So he said, know that verily it is an obligation upon every Muslim to know four things. And he said, the first thing is knowledge. Al-Ula al-Ilm. And then he described what knowledge it is. What knowledge is. Wa huwa ma'rufat Allah, ma'rufat al-Nabi, wa ma'rufat al-Din al-Islam biyadillah. And it is knowing Allah, and it is knowing His Messenger, and knowing the religion of Islam with the textual proofs. So that means study. It's imperative that every Muslim takes out some time in their life, in their busy schedule, to read some hadith, to read some beneficial Islamic knowledge, especially about aqidah and creed regarding their deen. And they need to know how to pray properly, how to make wudu and tahara properly. And that base base knowledge that is their usul and their usul fid, uh, usul ad din. You know this is the foundations that every Muslim must know. And then he mentioned some other beneficial things, but that is what's relevant for us right now. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Kitab al Kareem, "Khitamuhu misk." 
وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم <coughs> talking about the people of Jannah the people who made effort to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was describing the khamr the wine and beverages of the people of paradise and that it that it will khitamuhu <coughs> misk and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon those who strove and strove for the hereafter these great immense rewards of paradise. So that in and of itself, this ayah from the book of Allah is enough to encourage us to be of those who strive for paradise. That is the wadifa of the Muslim. Allah created us. I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with this divine purpose to worship him. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And that doesn't mean that we don't have some free time, that at times we may use it for uh, playing games or sports or sewing or reading, as you mentioned, and other activities. But you don't want to use it for sin. You don't want to use it for those things which bring you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather you want it to draw you in closer, nearer to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing that which he commanded you to do. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَتِيُ اللَّهُ وَعَتِيُ رسول. Obey Allah and obey his messenger. That's Islam. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathira min al-nas as-sihhatu wal-firaq ruahu bukhari the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma that two things two ni'matan the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ni'matan that these are Great blessings, immense blessings. We don't even realize that. SubhanAllah. Na'matan. Maghboonun fihima. That many people don't realize, many people waste. They don't take advantage of. Fi kathir min most of the people, many of the people. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what these two, this ni'matani is, qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as-siha wa firaq. He said, health and free time. So if you use your free time for disobedience to Allah by wasting time and especially doing those things which busy you from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what I mean is from busying you from the wajib especially, this is just talking about the general Muslims. Is that you don't want to do things that call you to disobedience to Allah and that busy you on ta'atillah, obedience to Allah. So for example, playing football or watching football on television. If you are watching that football and Salat comes in, but you're delaying the prayer because of the football game and missing Salat to Jama'ah or whatever the case may be, then this is disobedience. Then, then, then that can become a sinful practice. But if you are at least observing the wajib and you're stopping either from playing the match or from uh, watching it and going and praying and doing your duties, 
then be in there's no harm in that. So it's very important to keep the proper balance. We don't want, you know, not everyone is going to be uh, striving and making a sacrifice to really do the kind of talab al ilm that we need in our communities to help raise us. Not everyone's going to be that. But you don't want to waste your time. And you don't want to waste your time on sin. And you don't want to waste your time, meaning on those things which cause your heart to be covered and make you, uh, that have a negative effect on your heart. They don't remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you mentioned, that your experience was that, uh, was, was just that. And then the last part of the, of what you mentioned, you said, we as women need to take heed and busy ourselves with finding a suitable husband and getting ready to marry, work on ourselves, educate ourselves instead of reading useless books or watching useless series. So this is true. That you want to prepare yourself mentally, spiritually, physically, in every which way for that blessed unification. in order to become a righteous spouse and hopefully to find a righteous spouse. So this is very, very important as you already know and as you already mentioned. And especially those women, as you mentioned, that have no guardian. So it's very important to strive to be the best that you can and grow at the same time looking for righteous, suitable, pleasing Spouses. As far as they should be eager, should they be eager, shouldn't they be eager to uh, find a man who will protect them against themselves? This is, in theory, excellent. But what I found in experience is that often there is a sort of nux or a shortcoming if women are just striving just to please men. Meaning that her whole, her only outlet for or an answer for everything is just to get married. And then it's all going to work out. This is very important. But I do believe in a woman being a whole woman, a mature woman, and attaining whatever goals she's trying to do doesn't mean she's delaying marriage and not and and getting uh, going to the university or something like this but she needs to be at least a whole person cuz some women look for a man for for all their answers and then when the marriage uh doesn't work out the women are broken and we've seen many sisters leave the dean because of this so it's very important to keep the religion first and growing yourself mature and spiritually at the same time, you know, developing yourself at the same time while looking for a suitable spouse that will be compatible with your growth, that will help you to achieve what you're trying to achieve, that will help you be the best Muslim, that will help you safeguard yourself and protect yourself from the fire and get to Jannah. And likewise, you need to be that for them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. If anything I said that was correct is from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was surely for myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.